Today, we're going to be taking a look at these, the RF Design series of telemetry radios designed to be used with Ardrapilot PX4 or any Mavlink compatible system. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys an overview of the radio modules themselves, the specifications, as well as just try to give you an overview of how the system works and what you need to know before you purchase them. In the next video, I'm going to be jumping in and taking a closer look at the TX mod in more detail. And in a third video, we're then going to be actually doing the configuration and set up with a cube as well as Ardra Pilot. Now, just before we get into this, I just want to say all of these radios are available from 3DXR in the UK. They are a main dealer for not only the Q Pilot series of equipment, but also the RF Designs radios as well. They have very kindly lent us these radios to be able to make today's video. And if you're interested in getting yourself a set, please do check out the link to them in the description of this video. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's take a closer look at all of these radios and explain what this system is all about. The RFD series of radios from RF Designs are long-range wireless telemetry radios designed to be used with Ardra Pilot and PX4 or any Mavlink compatible system. They are available in various models depending on what the frequency requirements and legislation is in your area, and they're available in a standard size module as well as a micro size module as well. There is also a TX mod module available which goes into the JR bay on your radio that not only transmits your RC communication over the link, but also allows you to get your wireless telemetry data as well. All of the radios feature a 32-bit ARM core with AES hardware accelerated encryption. RC is available via a PPM pass-through with telemetry, and they are also fully ESD protected and filtered on all ports. They can have an air data rate of up to 500 kilobits a second, and they allow ranges in excess of 40 kilometers with up to one watt of transmitting power. They also have options for diversity antennas and they have a built-in transmitter low-pass filter, 20 dB low noise amplifier, as well as a RX saw filter as well. Also, depending on the model you choose, they are also license free in the USA, Canada, Australia and New Zealand. Something to note with these radios is because there are several different models, not all of them are compatible with each other due to the different frequency and legislation requirements. However, I'm going to try and explain which ones do work with others as we walk through the specs of each individual one. Taking a look at the first radio, and this is the RFD900X. This is the full 900 megs model with no restrictions. It has a frequency range of 902 to 928 megahertz, 51 individual channels, and one watt of RF output. It supports 255 unique IDs for configuration, and it has a fully unlocked config option, allowing you to change all of the frequencies and channels and settings. As mentioned, it supports Mavlink, UART, SBUS, and PPM, and these modules have six digital I.O. ports and run on 5 volt 1 amp when in TX mode or 5 volt 60 milliamp when in RX. As I've said, this is the 900X and this is the fully unlocked radio and is compatible with the 900X and 900 US models. Looking at the next radio, this is the RFD 900X US. This is the FCC certified version of the 900 megs model. It features a range of 902 to 915 megahertz and 51 fixed channels. It has high and low bands and again supports up to one watt of RF output with 255 unique IDs for configuration. One thing to note on this model is that it is a locked config, which means only certain parts of it can be changed to allow it to remain configured and certified for FCC use. It's compatible with other 900X US models as well as the 900X model as long as you configure it to the same settings as the US version. The next radio is the first of the 800 megs models and this is the 868X and this is the unlocked version of the 800 series for use in Europe. This model has up to eight channels of output and supports the frequency range of 865 to 870 megahertz up to one watt of RF power and again 
255 unique IDs. Because this is an X model, it features a fully unlocked config, allowing you to manually set the channels and the output to whatever you want to do within the range this radio is capable of. Compatibility-wise, this one is compatible with other 868X radios. The 800 series, though, is not compatible with the 900 series. So whilst this is an unlocked radio, it is only unlocked within that 800 megs bandwidth. The final radio in this series is the RFD868XEU, and this is a CE compliant version for EU markets. It has a frequency range of 869400 to 869650 and supports two channels or two bands. It has a limited power output of up to 500 milliwatts and still has up to 255 unique IDs. All of the other features you've come to expect from the same models. However, just like the US, compatible one, this one has a locked config, only allowing you to change the settings that you need that don't have any implication on its CE compliance. Taking a look around the module, you will see that there are two antenna connections on the top. Size-wise, it is 30mm wide by 57mm tall and 12.8mm thick. It has an RF shield on the front as well as a heatsink on the back, and the whole module itself weighs just 14.5 grams and features 3 times M2.5 mounting points with the headers for the I.O. and power located on the bottom. Alongside the main size module, there is also a micro size module of each version available as well. These feature the same 40 kilometers plus range and are available in the EU, US and X configurations as well. And they are fully compatible with their versions in the larger models too. The advantage to these is that they are smaller and lighter and have the same base spec as the other modules. However, they only feature two digital IO ports on the main PCB, but there are ports to be able to get to that via solder pads. It has a DF13 eight-way connector rather than pins for the IO. And the size on these modules is 19 by by 30 by 4.5 and these ones weigh just 2.7 grams compared to the larger ones. The last module to talk about is what is called the TX mod. Now this is a combined TX module in a JR bay allowing you to plug it into the back of your radio and get not only long range remote signal but actually your wireless telemetry as well. It has a built in 2.4 gigs Wi-Fi access point, which can be accessed in client mode. It supports TCP as well as UDP, has an easy config web-based wizard that allows you to set the settings and do everything for this module specifically. And it will fit in all the usual radios, such as the Tyrannis and anything like that. It has a wide operating voltage range of 5 to 18 volts, and it's optimized for use with Mavlink and Mission Planner for that wireless telemetry. It allows you to have that control link via PPM over that 40 plus kilometers range, and it also does that ground control telemetry gateway over Wi-Fi as well. Size-wise, well, it fits in a normal bay, and it is 52 by 66 by 38 mils. Just before we jump in and have a look at the configuration, and I'll explain how these radios actually communicate and the things you need to know around that, I do just want to highlight again on this whole compatibility thing because it is quite confusing. We have two different bands of radios. So you've got the 900s and the 868s. Both the standard size module and the micro modules are all compatible as long as they are the same version. There is no technical difference between compatibility on them. So for instance, if you had an 868X micro and an 868X full size, they will work fine as long as they're configured correctly. We the differences are is between the certified and non-certified models. On the 900 side of things, we have the 900X and the 900X US and the US is the FCC certified model. Just to be clear, those radios are actually compatible with each other as long as you configure them the same. So for instance, you can configure the 900X to the same settings as the 900X US and they will work. However, on the EU side of radios, which is these ones here, 
you cannot configure the 868X to work with the 868X EU because there are some frequency band differences and it will not communicate out of the box. There are some things that can be done with firmware, but I'm not going to get into that today. So with regards to an out-the-box setup, what you should do is choose the pair of radios that match for your region and use case. Ideally, so if you're US, you would choose the 900X US models, and if you were EU, you would choose the 868X EU model to make sure that you are correctly compliant. The next thing we're going to take a look at is configuration and actually those settings that I was talking about just now. The setup for these radios can be done several ways. For instance, you can configure them via Mission Planner. However, it is my advice that you configure them via the optional USB cable and the RFD Tools app that you can download from their website. This USB cable allows you to program the modules, configure all the settings, and get them set up with the configuration that you need. When you have the USB cable, it is designed to go straight onto the pins on the bottom of the module, but you do have to be careful to make sure that you get it in the right place, otherwise you could cause some damage. For the micro modules, you do need an additional harness, which is this one here, which is available as well. And this is a programming harness which goes into the connector at the bottom and then back into those pins to go into the USB. However, you don't need that with the standard radio. It goes straight onto the pins itself. To do the configuration, the first thing we need to do is plug in the cable. So we take that header, which comes on the back of the cable, and you have it. So we have the black on that side with the little arrow, and that goes into the bottom pins with it on that side of the radio like that. And we can then take the USB and plug that into our PC. If we wanted to do the same with the micro radio, you first of all take that little harness, as I showed you earlier, and we plug that into the base of the radio like that. And then we take the little jumper, which we have here, Align it so everything actually is aligned correctly. So if we look at it that way, you've got the red cable there and that matches to the red on that one there. So again, three wires in for the red, push that in and then that aligns and then we're ready to go on the configuration for the micro module too. Now, what we'll do next is hop over and actually configure the radios to show you them actually communicating. And we're going to use a 900X US and a 900X to demonstrate this in here. Now, just to be clear, as I've said already, these two are compatible as long as they have the same settings. So we've got the USB plugged in and you can see that we're powered up on that radio as well. So what we'll do is hop over to the desktop. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can configure these radios via Mission Planner, but I strongly suggest you use the RFD Tools app, which is available to download from their website. Once you've got it installed and the USB plugged in, we simply select the COM port, which is COM18, click Connect, and then we're going to click Load Settings, and this then will download the settings off the unit itself to the display to actually show me them. Now, as I've said, this one we've got connected is the 900X, and you can see that up here by the frequency code. It's telling us the 900X with a country code of 255, which means it's unlocked. There are no restrictions on this module at all. I am not today gonna go through every setting that is available in this app. What I am though gonna show you is the very basics that you do need to know. So for instance, as I've said, the important things to understand when these radios are communicating is they need to have the same frequency band. So the minimum and max frequency needs to be the same. The same net ID, so that is the ID the radio will communicate on. And if you've got AES encryption turned on down here, they need to have the same keys as well. As I mentioned, when you get them as standard, if you buy two models the same, they should come pre-configured to work out the box. However, you should understand that they will all come configured with that same setup. And I do strongly advise that you make sure they are set the same. So what we're going to do is make sure we've got the correct settings. Now, I already know on this that it should be 902,000 to 915,000 with the channels set at 51. And what we want to do is set the ID on this to 100 because that's the ID 
that I've actually set my radio to. You can go all the way up to 255, so there's plenty of options available. But for us, we're today going to be selecting 100. We don't have AES encryption turned on, so I don't need to worry about that. And I don't need to configure any of the other settings. All I need to do is click the Save Settings button. Now I've done that. That will then write the settings to the radio. And if we then hop back to the overhead and give it a second, you will see that in a second, the radios will actually connect. You can see this one has gone solid. That one's gone solid. And the radios are now communicating between each other because I've set the details the same. As I've said, the 900 US and the 900X will do this, but you can't do this with the EU ones as far as I can tell. Just jumping back over to the app to show you a couple of other settings, you can see over here we've got antenna 1 and 2, antenna 1, antenna 2 options, so you can select it for diversity or individual antennas, or you can set one for TX and one for RX. As I've said, you've got your AES encryption, which is the 128 or 256, and down here is all of the other options around being able to configure the GPIO ports and all of the others. Also, what we can do is reading the settings from the other module, now it's connected. So for instance, if I click load settings again, because both of the radios are now connected, whereas they weren't earlier, it will now drag in all of the settings for both radios and not just the initial one that I had connected over USB. So we'll wait a second and wait for it to do the connection and boom, you can see it's come in and it's brought in the settings for our USB radio on the left and our remote remote radio on the right. And if we actually take a look, you can see that the details are different. So this one has a country code of US because the second radio is a locked version. And we've then got the restricted options on the channels. So for instance, if I go on the non-restricted radio, we can select any number of channels. Whereas on the restricted radio, we're limited to 51. So you don't have all of the options available. But the good thing between the 900X and the 900X US is they are compatible, unlike the EU versions. I've just connected up one of the EU radios just to show you that. And as I've said, this radio is heavily restricted compared to the X. It has a limited frequency band, limited channels, and it has a high and low option as well for the bands. And it's just not compatible with the 868X as far as I can see. I do believe there are firmware options available, but what I would suggest is getting whatever models suit your needs. If you're in the EU, get a pair of EU models rather than trying to mix and match. And that is it for today's video. Now, this one, I've covered the radios themselves. In the next video, we're going to be taking a look at the TX Mod device. And then in the third video, I'm going to be walking you guys through the whole setup of these with Mission Planner and Ardra Pilot. Today's video was an overview and to give you an idea of the features and specs, as well as the different types of radios that are available. And as I've said in the next one, we'll take a closer look at this TX Mod because there's a lot to look at here on this one in itself. Now, all of these radios are available from 3DXR in the UK. They are a main dealer for not only the Q-Pilot equipment, but all of the RF design radios as well. They hold everything in stock you need to build your copter, your plane. And if you're interested in getting yourself a set of these or anything for your system, please do check them out. There's a link to them in the description of this video. A massive thank you from me to Ben at 3DXR because we would not have been able to make this video without their support. Further to that, I just want to say if you'd like to support the channel, there are links to our Patreon as well as buy me a coffee in the description as well. And it's only by you guys using them am I able to keep making content and keep making new videos. Also, if you'd like more information, please do put comments in the bottom of this video. I will try to answer them as soon as I possibly can. Also, there is a link to my Discord server as well if you're interested in checking that out. And I will try and answer any questions you may have there as well.